Hello, my Earth Angel friends. I'm Reverend Nina Rowe, founder of AngelsTeach.com, and I'm going to do a Wheel of the Year card spread for the year of 2011. We did a Wheel of the Year spread with our Living with the Angels Silver and Gold Halo members this past weekend, and I already have a sense of what the year has ahead. I've also done some of my own personal journeying around 2011, and I can already tell the angels are already sharing with me that it's going to be a really, really magical, wonderful year. Mm. Yes, a lot of change, perhaps a few bumps along the way, but a lot of goodness is going to come out of this coming year as we head into 2012. So I'm going to use Tony Carmen Salerno's Gaia Oracle for the reading today. And we're doing the reading up in my my secret alcove, I like to call it, where I do uh, yoga and meditation every morning. And it has a great area for doing a card spread that is large. This 12 card spread is sizable and doesn't fit on my regular altar that I use. So I'm going to do this on the floor. So let's see what the angels have to share with us for January. All right, for January, we have the Harmony card. I'm going to read each of these cards, and at the end of the video, I will show you a full view of the whole card spread as it turns out. For February, we have Gaia. For March, we have the search. For April, we have attachment. Sliding back here a little bit. Again, this is, these are our big cards to begin with, and this is a sizable card spread. May, we have Moonlight Goddess. June, we have Perception. Messages already coming in. July, we have the Dream. A lot of messages validating what's already come through for this year, and I, I can feel some new ones as well. So what are we on? June, July, August is Goddess of Creation. September is the message. October is purification, water element. There's several purification cards for each of the elements. November is amethyst. And last we have, for December 2011, Eternal Love. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. So I'm just taking a look at all of the cards. Again, I will show you at the end of the video what the whole spread looks like because the energy of all of the cards together gives um, a message in and of itself. So it's each card individually and then it's how it all pulls together. So we have the Harmony card for January, which we're already in the middle of at this point. And what I'm seeing in this card, the message I'm getting is reaching, stretching, going beyond boundaries, um, really stretching to understand that the only limitations are those that are in our minds. And that as we let go of limiting belief systems as we embrace um, a boundless potential and a boundless potential around goodness that we reach for the stars. You'll notice that the 
um, beautiful woman in this image is reaching up towards the heavens. So she's reaching for her highest potential. And she's doing that because she's letting go of any um, beliefs that she is anything but able to reach for unlimited potential. So uh, yes, harmony does apply in this case. Uh, you may have heard me say before that sometimes the words apply um, and sometimes they're, they're, part, they're always part of the message, but a lot of times they're not uh, front and center, so to speak. In this case, it's really about reaching for the stars and understanding that you, you have the abilities and working through um, any belief uh, or healing, I should say, that um, will help you to um, embrace a limitless potential and step into the true abundance that you already um, are deserving of. So then we move into February, February being the Gaia card, and it's a continuation, and you'll see when I show you the whole spread at the end of the video, you'll see that there's symmetry here, because the Harmony card, she's reaching up with her left arm, that's the, the Divine Feminine coming forward, the future coming forward. And with the Gaia card, um, in February, we start moving into a balance, and she's reaching up with her right arm. And you'll see that, um, you know, that's, that's about the beginning of the balance of the masculine and the feminine. And there's a lot of chatter in the, in, in the um, light worker community, for lack of a better label, around the return of the divine feminine. And what I like to really emphasize is not so much the return of the divine feminine, but the return of balance between the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Because we're really not looking for the feminine to dominate the masculine, we're looking for there to be greater balance. And so that we have the harmony, uh, there's that harmony word again, and up here on earth, there's the Gaia coming forward. So January and February, a lot about stepping into that power, reaching for the limitless potential, and really um, beginning to understand who you are and who you're meant to be. The energies all around us right now are very supportive of that personal journey. Moving into March, we have the Search card, and she's poised, she's positioned, she's ready to burst forward with the spring that happens in the next month of April. And actually, spring does start here in the Northern Hemisphere on March 21st, so with the equinox. So it is definitely appropriate that this card be coming forward for March. You will notice that she has the light at her back. She knows what she needs to do. She's got this sense of purpose that's very powerful, that's very strong, and again, she's positioned. She's ready to move forward. Um, she's balanced knowing that she's not limited, um, and, and she's ready to move. Looking at April, we have the attachment card. Again, you know, if you, if you know this deck as I do, uh, you'll, you'll realize that these images that seem so similar um, are not the norm of this deck. So it's interesting that these similar images have come forward and, and all together in the first half of the year. I see the attachment card um, as part of that springing forward. I'm seeing those leaves coming up in her leg region as growing up. She's, she's, she's growing up <laughs> and she's growing up and coming out into the world. And you'll see the leaves that are coming down from her left arm are the fruits of her labors. They're starting to, they're starting to create, they're starting to move out into the world. And she's really not shy about who she is. Sometimes this card, the, the female image in it, she can look shy, she can look retiring, um, but there's a, there's a sense of boldness about her. She's putting herself out there. And, and she feels she feels good about it. She might have slight hesitation, um, but she's putting herself out there, and she's she's okay with it. It's a good thing. Um, there's also a lot of symmetry in this card that I'm feeling. When you look at the left and the right sides, it feels very balanced. Um, so as she's putting herself out there, there is a sense of balance around that. So looking at the card for May, the Moonlight Goddess. There, there's a peaceful serenity about this card. There's this um, where in attachment in April, she was growing up. There's a maturity that's happening here, or a maturation process, if you will, with the moonlight goddess. She's, she's at peace. She's, um, 
there's no deliberation about who she is. She knows who she is, and she's stepping forward in that way. And again, the Earth energies in, in May and in the first half of the year are very supportive of uh, this process of stepping into your true authority. As we were saying on the call the other day, as we get messages like this with quite a bit of repetition, and so I asked my angels, you know, why this message again now? And what they shared with me is that the energy on the planet and the universe is, is really upping the ante, that we're really um, being called with a greater sense of urgency, if you will, to step forward, to, to really live in alignment with our true authority. And, and that's why this message is coming up yet again. So looking at June, we have the Perception card. And this is the first card in the year uh, that we have seen so far where there's no sense of nudity, where there's no naked, there's, it's, it's, she's, she's mature. She is sure of who she is and there's no need to expose herself because she already knows who she is. And a lot of times um, when we feel that need to, to expose ourselves emotionally, spiritually, mentally, um, there's a, a reason behind it that is about um, understanding who we really are and what are our own limitations. There's that word limitations again. Um, so that we, we test the water, so to speak. Like, uh, for example, let me see if, if I expose this part of myself, will people accept me? If I expose this true wart or this true blemish, uh, will my friends still love me? And there's none of that energy here in June. There's this just understanding of warts, blemishes, all of it, I'm good, I'm here, and I'm here to do my work. The other message coming in for June that I'm getting is just intense, intuitive energies. And of course, we're always supported with our intuition, but there's just the perception really applies in particular for this month, very strong. Moving into the second half of the year, we have July starting off with the dream. And I'm actually being guided to talk about July and August together because August is the goddess of creation. And you will notice that these two cards are very similar, that there's this energy of relaxing, retiring, and yet um, exposing yourself again too. And, and I think it's about being okay with uh, taking a time out, with really being okay with understanding that um, the energy, the intensity of the springtime, that this is a period, July and August, is a period to allow the fruits of those labors to just be, to just be processed. Um, one thing that did come up in our reading on uh, Sunday was that July feels like there may be some kind of an earth event, nothing to be uh, scared of in any way, shape, or form, but there's going to be some kind of a, a pop of energy, so to speak, is the, is the terminology in my head. And so I think that that makes it that much more important for us to, to find peace and set the intention for those summer months to allow uh, what has manifested the beginning half of the year to take its highest path and to just let it ripen. In fact, the angels are giving me the image of a wonderful, beautiful bottle of wine that you decant and you pour into a, a beautiful glass decanter and you just allow it to sit before you drink it. You just allow it to rest and to be. And dough, actually, is another thing that we just make it and we allow it to rest. And that's what July and August feel a lot about to me. All right, moving into September, we have the message. September is about a call to action, and I'm seeing that dove flying into the face of the light there, and, and there's a sense of balance with those trees on either side, but definitely call to action, I'm hearing very loud and clear around this. So I think all of us on the earth plane are going to be called to um, make some important choices in September. So something to keep in mind that as you come out of those um, processing months of July and August that you're going to take what you have processed and make some really wise choices, making sure that you make those choices from the heart with your angels. 
So moving into the fall, we have October is purification, the water element. And October feels like it's going to be another month of a lot of change. Water is a lot about change, about fluidity, about, um, I'm hearing, moving tides, ocean tides. And it will be a time of purification as well. And yet, as she's purifying, you'll see the beautiful image in this card, um, as this, this woman is purifying, she's coming into um, herself in a, in a whole new way. You'll see that the energy that she's carrying is unfettered. And I'm looking back at the other cards, and she is the only image um, that is standing that is completely... Uh, unobstructed with any branches. The other ones have branches or vines or, or veils, and she's not. She's just who she is. She's purified, and, and that's who she is. And what I am hearing from the angels is that any purification challenges are greatly lessened as you, excuse me, are greatly lessened as you um, step into your power and ask your angels to help you live from a place of truth. If I had to summarize this year in one word, it would be truth. Because that's what the energies are beginning to insist upon in a more and more intense kind of way. So we have for November the Amethyst card. And what I'm seeing is that she's, she's starting to take a break. Again, similar to July and August, she's, she's still working, she's still doing her thing, um, and yet she's starting to turn towards the future, starting to think about 2012, and think about, okay, what do I need to do next? Um, not just 2012, but um, even just beyond that, as necessary. Um, there's another message I need to, to tune into a little bit more here. What I'm hearing is uh, she needs to step forward and align a little bit more. I'm noticing that wing behind her, it looks like a wing I believe anyway, is reminding me of a roller coaster. And what I'm hearing is alignment. So as she's turning and stepping forward and looking at the future, setting that intention in an even more earnest sense to be in alignment with her truth. Again, that one word for this year is truth. Moving into December, Eternal Love. What a beautiful, beautiful card to close with here. Uh, eternal Love, that says it all. I mean, that's what happens when we step into our truth, as hard as that can be at times. It is about discovering that eternal love that is your birthright. That is absolutely what you are here to do. Whatever your life path, whatever your life journey, you are here to experience and embody eternal love. You will see our beautiful Wheel of the Year spread here of Tony Carmen Salerno's Gaia Oracle deck. And we started with the Harmony card for January. You'll see that in the upper right hand corner. And we read this card spread going around clockwise ending with the card that's at the top, Eternal Love for December. And that is our beautiful spread that we've been reading here. So I'm just tuning in to see if there's any more messages here for us today. And I'm hearing that we are good to go. So I wish you a beautiful and blessed 2011. It's an exciting year ahead and I would love for you to check out angelsteach.com if you haven't already visited our website. We have all kinds of certification programs, e-courses, our Living with the Angels membership program, and lots of other goodies as well as an online card picking tool where you can see many other of Tony Carmen Salerno, Salerno's beautiful, beautiful artwork on his, several of his decks that we have online. So again, wishing you love, joy, and abundance for the new year to come. Be well.